The beautiful displays of orchid extravaganza are only one aspect how we cultivate and display our orchids here at Longwood Gardens. We actually have orchids on display every day of the year. My name is Kelly Saracino. Join me as we take a look at this collection with Longwood Gardens orchid grower, Greg Griffiths. Hi Kelly, it's my pleasure to share with you the breadth and diversity inside our orchid collection here at Longwood. We've been showcasing orchids here at Longwood since 1921 when this orchid house opened. Many of the plants that you see in Orchid Extravaganza also feature prominently in our collection. Taking a look at your collection, the one thing I notice is these plants all look so very different. So what makes an orchid an orchid? That's a really excellent question. First, it might be helpful to know that the orchid family is one of the largest plant families on the face of the planet, and the orchids are found on every continent except Antarctica. So when you look at an orchid, you're gonna see three sepals, which are the outside petals, and three petals, one of which has been developed into a lip. Another prominent feature is the column, which is the male and female organs that have been fused together into one structure, and it's right in the middle of the flower. So between the lip and the column, you have two great identifiers for telling an orchid from another type of flower. One thing that I noticed in this room is a lot of the orchids have their roots exposed. They kind of seem to be floating. So how are these plants getting the water and nutrients that they need to survive? So most orchids you're going to see in cultivation are what we call epiphytes, which means that they're dwelling on trees. They are not parasitic. They're simply using the tree as a platform. A feature of the roots is a layer called velamin, and so what velamin is, is it's essentially a sponge. And so every time it rains, that sponge is grabbing as many nutrients, as much water as it can before the rain finishes. Okay. Are all orchids then epiphytic? No, actually there are lots of orchids that are terrestrial, meaning that they dwell in the earth. Most of them are centered in North America and Europe. Um, but there are many spread throughout the world in tropical places. A lot of these orchids are deciduous, so they lose their leaves in their winter season, whether it gets very cold or not. How do you keep them looking so perfect? Every time I walk through the conservatory, they're just gorgeous. So we have between 200 and 300 plants in this room any given day of the year. And so what we do is as one flower fades, we replace it with a new plant coming from the greenhouses. And so we do this about two or three times a week. And what do you do with those when they are done blooming? So our collection has about 2,000 different taxa and about 6,000 different plants. And so we have five greenhouses in the back, each with its own cultural requirements, so that these plants each go to the place that suits them best when they're done flowering to grow on for the next year. Great. I'd love to take a look at those greenhouses here at Longwood. Let's go. This really is an exciting space. What type of orchids are you growing here? What makes this house so interesting is that it's actually cooled by three different produce coolers, which allow us to keep the temperatures much lower than normal. In the summer, the cooler part of this greenhouse doesn't get much above 68, and the warmer part not much above 72. In the winter, both sides can get down to about 48 degrees comfortably. That is really cold. Why do you want to keep the temperatures that low? It also enables us to grow a very special genus called Disa, which come from South Africa and grow in the tabletop mountains by streams of running water. They require cool roots, and so this greenhouse allows us to grow them really well. We also grow Lycasti, Anguloa, cool-growing Oncidiums, and Miltoniopsis in here. This house gives us the ability to grow a vast variety of orchids. Are there any other orchids that do prefer those cooler temperatures? Absolutely. We have another greenhouse where we grow our cymbidium all winter long and keep the temperatures in the 40s and 50s. This allows them to flower very well. Next, let's go take a look at some of our warmer greenhouses. I agree. This greenhouse is home to one of the easiest and most common orchids to grow, Phalaenopsis. This is a warm, lower light greenhouse. The temperature in here never drops below 55 or 60, but most summer days this house is in the 80s. We also grow vanilla and bulbophyllum in this house. Those temperature ranges sound very similar to the temperature range of my own house. The growth requirements of Phalaenopsis, especially the low light requirements and their endurance of less than perfect watering, make them very conducive to home growing. These orchids are gorgeous, totally different than the orchids we saw in the other two greenhouses. What type of plants are growing in here? This is our intermediate house, which means it has moderate temperatures and medium light levels, which means that it encompasses most of the orchid world. In here are things like Paphiopetalum, Phragmopedium, and Oncidium. And most of what is commonly grown for the retail market comes from these conditions. And what does it take for these orchids to bloom? Generally speaking, if you grow your plants well, you won't have to do anything to cause them to flower. They'll pick up on minor seasonal changes that will tell them when it's time to bloom. Great. Are there any others we could see? Absolutely. 
Next, we can look at the cat leaves, which is the largest part of our orchid collection. Great. This is the Cattleya house. Cattleyas make up about one-third of our collection here at Longwood. You can learn more about this stunning genus in the History of Orchids lesson at Longwood. This greenhouse is bright and warm, with the highs in the summer reaching the low 90s. We also grow a number of dendrobium in this house, as well as the vanda, which come inside from a shade house where they grow in the summer. Thank you, Greg, for such an exciting look at the collection that we have here at Longwood Gardens. It's been my pleasure to show you all the exciting orchids that we showcase here at Longwood Gardens throughout the year. And remember, many orchids are not as hard to grow as you might think. Thank you for broadening your world by learning in ours.